But there's other losses. There's not only Simon-like losses, but there's loss of, of position. Maybe you've had a job loss recently. There's the loss of loved ones. That can be devastating. Uh, at work, a couple months ago, one of my uh, supervisors, a guy named Kevin, he lost a grandchild to SIDS. What a devastating thing that is. Uh, that same individual, just a week ago last Friday, his son, 24-year-old son, actually the father of the SIDS victim, uh, he got in a devastating car accident and, and passed away. I went to a, a viewing uh, Friday morning for his son. And I think within the last year or two, he lost a brother and a father. I mean, these are, these are devastating losses, and the loss of people around us can bring about bitterness. Has that happened? Power. Sometimes we are in situations and circumstances, and we have a, a boss that's harsh. We have a, a coworker that we have difficulty getting along with, and we are powerless to change the circumstances about us. And that powerlessness can be something that is a loss and a, a, something that is, creates a bitterness within us. Or pain. Some within the body of Christ here go through terminal, painful situations and things again and again. And that, again, a situation that we can't change, that we have no control over, and it brings constant pain. Something that's easy to get bitter about. Other causes of bitterness. Um, well, some will say, well, a lot of people experience loss. They don't meet their expectations, and they're not bitter. We learned this morning in Romans chapter 5 and verse 3 that tribulation worketh perseverance. And perseverance, character. And character, hope. So it can go that direction. If God's working in our life and our heart, it, it, it can go that way. Well, why didn't Simon go that course? Well, Simon, he did make a profession of faith. He did believe and was baptized, and he says in verse 13 that he continued with Philip. He was there, but yet he had this bitterness issue. Was Simon saved? I don't think he was. I think it's clear when Peter says of him, you have neither part nor portion in this matter. Maybe he's speaking of the giving of the Holy Spirit, or maybe he's speaking of the matter of salvation. Your heart is not right in the sight of God. And so forth. I think it's pretty, uh, you're, you're bound by iniquity. It's pretty obvious that Simon made a profession of faith, but it was an empty of pre a profession of faith. But does this mean that the lack of true salvation is the cause of bitterness and having true salvation is the cure? No, because real Christians, genuinely, genuine believers, do struggle with bitterness. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 31 says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you, the church there at Ephesus, with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. And that's not the only passage that talks about the temptation of bitterness for Christians. And so, the causes of bitterness, loss. The consequences, and I think these consequences can be, can be compared to the consequences of, of bitterness in a Christian's life or an unbeliever's life, either way, but the consequences are, number one, a selfish focus. A selfish focus. Here it says, in verse 13, second part, seeing the miracles and signs which were done. Why was Simon focused on seeing the miracles and signs which were done? A selfish focus continues in verse 18. Here it says, And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands that the Holy Spirit was given, he offered money. What was going through Simon's mind? Simon's mind is there's a power here. There's a power here, and, and I want it. There's a power here, and, and I've, I've got to get it. There's a selfish focus here. Hmm, I can get this power. I can come back. And uh, it's a business decision. A selfish focus. Here, Simon is showing a selfish focus, and if we are in a bond of bitterness, if we're poisoned by bitterness, we have a selfish focus. Secondly, a demanding spirit. A demanding spirit. Look at verse 19. 
It says, and it's Simon saying, give me this power. Verse 18, you have to go back to When Simon saw that through the laying on of hands the apostle had uh, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money saying, give me this power. Now, was this a, a request? No. The, the give is in the imperative tense, which means it's a command. Now remember, uh, here, this guy, Simon, he's used to people taking heed to him. He's used to just giving orders and being a boss, and he's, he's out there, and he's just saying, give me this. I got the money. Surely you want money. Give me this power. He's very demanding here. It's like a, a little kid in a, a line uh, at the register, and he sees a candy bar, and he says, give me this candy bar. It's very demanding here. Also, here I, I have you notice a demanding spirit is a consequence of a bitter spirit. Verse 24, okay, what, what happens in this story? What happens in the story is Peter says to him, repent and pray. Pray that if perhaps God will forgive you and repent of this, your wickedness. And Simon's response to that is Simon answered and said, pray to the Lord for me. And I think if you have a King James Version, it says, pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which you have spoken may come upon me. I want to read you two commentaries about that. First is a, a freebie online, a guy named uh, David G-U-Z-I-K. I'm not sure how to pronounce that last name, but he says this. Instead of actually humbling his own heart before God, Simon asks Peter to pray he would be spared the consequences of his sin. And here's another freebie online commentary. commentary. It's uh, Jameson, Fawcett, and Brown. I'd like you to read, th read this. Peter had urged him to pray for himself, right? Peter said, repent and pray for himself. He asks those wonder-working men to do it for him, having no confidence in prayer of faith, but thinking that these, those men possessed some particular uh, interest with heaven. Both of these commentators say he asked. And my question to you is, if he asked in verse 24, where's the question mark? You see any question mark in verse 24? I don't see any question mark in verse 24. And I can tell you, the word pray, that, that is in the imperative tense. And in the original language, you don't need the word you or ye, which is plural for you in Old English, which is in the King James Version, and it happens to be there in the Greek. You say, well, what does that mean, Bob? That means that it was emphatic, that he was, as if he was pointing his finger at Peter and John, and he says, you pray that none of these things happen to me. He's being very demanding here. One comment I read said, well, we really don't need to know the spirit in which he said this, whether he was begging them to pray for him or whatever it was, but one thing is clear, he is trying to control the situation by what he says. He says, pray. You pray for me. And it's a, it's a show of the kind of demanding kind of a spirit that a bitter person can often have. Now, would you be honest with yourself? Would we be honest with ourselves? When we're angry and when we're bitter, we can have a demanding spirit, can't we? We can have a demanding spirit, do we? May God grant us sight into our own hearts to see whether or not we have this kind of consequence of a bitter spirit. You remember, uh, and this may not be a demand, but I just had this thought. There was a home improvement. We used to watch that TV sitcom. One of Tim Taylor's favorite places was Harry's Hardware Store, and Harry had this wife, Dolores, and there was an episode where they were going through a separation, Harry and Dolores. And Dolores was this kind of a a person that always had a scowl on their face and was not very known for her uh, charm. And she was a waitress, and she, there's a scene where someone asks for coffee, and she's all bitter about this separation, and uh, she pours coffee for this individual, and the person says, is that decaf? Do you remember this line? And she says, is that what you want? And he says, yes. And, he says, and she says, that's what it is. You know, that kind of a spirit of... That's what you want? That's what it is. I, that really stuck in my mind. I don't know about you. But here's a demanding spirit. Now, she didn't really, in a sense, Dolores never made a demand of this individual, but you understand the spirit of this situation was a demanding spirit. A better person has a demanding spirit. 